Well, hi, everyone. I'm Adam Bedford. I'm from uh, Going Postal, the podcast. I'm also uh, a TV and film editor in Los Angeles, so that keeps me busy. I'm lucky enough to work on uh, all sorts of projects, uh, ranging from TV to uh, feature films, trailers, all that sort of stuff. And as we all know, all have their own challenges and rewards. Now, have a look at this. This is a trailer for a film, an indie film I, I cut not too long ago. The film is called Bloody Homecoming, and it's a, a fun throwback to those old 1980s uh, slasher films. Problem is with this, and in most indie films, no budget and no time. The film's unfinished, and we need to get a trailer out really quickly because the producer wants to get dis distribution sold and generate some buzz, all that sort of stuff. So what I did here, uh, before I got to NAB, I roughed out a quick trailer uh, of just some random footages of the film that we'd shot so far, because they, they hadn't even shot the ending yet. So just to sort of whet your appetite, so to speak. Uh, producers love the cut, love where it's going, except one thing, it needs to be a little bit scarier. Which is fine, it's a horror movie, we need to make it scary. Problem is, we only have today to do it. They want the, the final cut tonight, it's got to go out tomorrow morning, so how do we make this scary in a hurry? Uh, well, you can make some scary looking stuff and creatures and overlays and things. You could take all day, you could take a few days to do that. But if you're using something like Rampant, you can do it pretty quickly. So um, I guess where should we start? Let's start up top. Let's start with the cards. Now these cards, uh, these are all titles I did in motion uh, and then just brought them back into Final Cut 10. Pretty basic. And we want to start happy, it's a happy school, everyone's happy, blah, 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 no one's dead yet. And then time to celebrate, they're at their homecoming dance, and here's where the turn starts to happen. Biggest night of the year might be their last. All right, so it looks a bit boring. How can we make that scarier? Let's, uh, let's go to the, um, the film grunge. Rampant has a whole library of film grunge. What you're looking at here on the screen is just like one folder. It's, uh, there's like, like a couple of million gigabytes or something. Maybe not that much, but you, you get the idea. Um, so let's find some grunge. Uh, we're going to build up to some scary stuff. We want something to be a little flickery. Maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. How about, how about that? All right. How about this one? All right. So click on your, set your in point for there. And then down here, what we need to do, because we already have the space cut out for us, we just have to go Command, Option, and Up on the keyboard. And that turns that title into a connected clip. And so we have a, uh, what's called a gap clip here. So all we need to do, being magnetic timeline, love it or hate it, I personally love it, drag it onto that clip, replace from start, and bam. There we go. And we'll just let that render. Biggest night of the year. OK. Maybe we drop the opacity on that just a bit, because there's a little too in your face. And then get down, it might be their last. OK, now we want to ramp this up a bit. So let's ramp it up with rampant, pardon the pun. All right, command option up on both those clips. Now we have uh, a big gap clip and two uh, on a sec what's called a secondary storyline, if you're not familiar with Final Cut 10. Uh, let's draw a bl let's blade tool in the middle. You don't need to be that precise. Uh, and let's have a look at the, these are grunge light. Uh, grunge light packages. Rampant has a bunch. This is only one folder, like I mentioned. Uh, there just wasn't time to load them all into the project. But you get an idea of the, the kind of thing they do. So, so it might be their last. We want to find something that's a little bit, how about something like this? All right, so let's set our endpoint. Drag onto there. Replace from start. Now, normally what I'd probably do is take that title back into motion and put a drop shadow or something on, but it looks, for now, it looks fine. All right, that's probably not the best one because we have to cut it in half. So let's, let's go to our trim tool, go all the way. Some clips are longer than others. In this case, so that, no, we don't want that. So it might be their last. Now, the bit that jump there, we had a, let's put like a little static effect where it's one of the ch -ch things. Sorry, I like to make sound effects. JJ Abrams wasn't the first. 
All right, that's a pretty that's a pretty lame sound effect. Let's change that up here. You can do that uh, with the static preset. Go to style B. It's my favorite. Yeah, a little more of a. That's a little better. And then we'll put a sound effect. A sound effect would make that ch just pop like that. Okay, so now we're starting to get there. Trying to tell our story. Trying to, we're, we're trying to evoke it. That's what we do with trailers. We're trying to evoke an emotion. You want to see something and it's like, okay, you've got my attention. I will go and see this film. And so we do that with all sorts of tools, whether it be graphics or just uh, music sound effects. And I've added a bunch of music and sound effects, but I've turned them off for now so it's not too distracting. So let's, let's add another graphic here. Maybe something in the red family. Something like this, maybe. Uh, drag on, replace from start, and there we go. Now you'll notice that my project is in 2K. All of um, rampant stuff is in 4K. But to Final Cut Spatial Conform likes to fit to screen. So the dimensions aren't quite right. So all you need to do is go to Spatial Conform and then Fill, and there we are. All right, now it's starting to evoke a bit of an emotion. Okay, it's, okay I, she's about to die. It's getting scary. Bam. Let's do the same. You can't run. You can't hide. Let's go up. Uh, option command up takes that up onto a connected clip. You can make that even further by taking that into a storyline if you wanted to do fade-ins and fade-outs. But right now, a connected clip is all we need. Let's keep that, let's keep that theme going. Let's, let's use that red again. Drop it on there, spatial conform. Or if you've done it before, control C for copy, and then shift command V for paste attributes. Go to spatial conform and bam. Final Cut 10's gotten so much better now that you can use like things like paste attributes. I'm still waiting for adjustment layers, but there is a fix around that. Come and ask me later and I'll tell you how. Um, All right, so these three, okay, so we get that. This is a short clip, so that's what we would do. We would maybe cut that in half. And because there are lots of flickers in there, it's not, you're not going to notice it as much. Or you could retime the shot, make it slower, but that's gonna, that means you'll have to adjust everything. Otherwise, it's going to look really out of place. Okay, so Shift-Command-V, we're pasting attributes for spatial conform. Okay, everything looks great from your past. So now we have three. So this is the part of the title. This is th these are the three main story points of the film. Okay, it's all about these kids who did something they shouldn't have, and now it's come back to bite them on the ass. So you can't run, you can't hide from your past. And then we get to the title. Now I want to do something good. Now. In Final Cut 10, you've got some great generators, and there are plenty of third-party ones. You can make your own in motion. For this one, I like the Glimmer motion. Let's go over to here. The Glimmer generator, I'm sorry. So let's find Glimmer here. See, that's what it looks like, but we don't need it to be blue. We need it to be red, so it looks like blood. Let's turn this on. And I've already done this to save time. Okay, so now it kind of looks like we're traveling through the bloodstream, but it's just not enough. Let's add another grunge light in there. Uh, maybe even drop the opacity a little bit so we can still see the blood. And what I've done also is use the blend mode, add. That's an, that's an important thing. So maybe just drop it back a little bit. Yeah, still not enough. I want it to make it look gritty. I want it to make, look like, make it look like a 1980s slasher film. So let's go back to our film grunge. And there are tons and tons of things you can do. These are the only tools I'm using now because I'm trying to keep it simple. But uh, just playing around with the toolkits and the style effects, you can do your own thing. And it's not like they're templates. They're just ways uh, to let you be creative and, and save a little bit of time. So this is how the title's going to look now. Like that. All right, so we've, d we've done our title cards. OK, we've grunged that up a bit. That looks cool. But I, I want to do one more thing. I want to make it a little bit scarier. And then I found that Rampant made a monster toolkit. 
Now, what's a Monster Toolkit, you ask? I'll tell you exactly what that is. Monster Toolkit is a bunch of things you can drag and drop onto your subject and track, like red eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, mystic eyes, uh, teeth, skin, all sorts of stuff. Now, we don't want to do that. Okay, this is not a vampire film. I feel like there are enough of those. But we know that this guy, who in real life is an English comedian, but he's playing a, uh, a really crazy janitor. But what we, don't, what we don't know is maybe he has some secret power. Maybe he's uh, some sort of demonic vessel. Who knows? So let's take, let's give him some eyes. I think it was... So let's... Now, ideally what you would do if you had uh, a tracking program, like Core Melt or, or something like that, or even After Effects, this, this would be ideal. I don't have that right now, so I, I'll, I'll just show you... A, in rough strokes what to do, and then I'll show you one I made in um, After Effects. So yeah, you can reduce the scale, you can add blend mode. So let's make that add, so we can see that, drop the opacity a little bit. Okay, that's still way too big. If otherwise, it feels like a James Bond film. Not the kind of image we're provoking here. So we want to go to Transform Control. Drag that over his eye. Oh, look. It looks like Doc Brown's character from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Still too big. And then, if you are a glutton for punishment, you could actually keyframe that frame by frame in Final Cut 10 and add some blur and make that look good. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to show you what I did earlier. when I find it. So let's go to the final project. All right. So this is everything we just did. But I've got the sound effects turned on. I've got the titles all ready to go. And let's show you Mr. English Guy's eyes. Now he looks badass. Like something out of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, perhaps. All I know is these, these kids have pissed him off, and he's, off, he's after blood. Or is he? He could be a red herring. Who knows? Who cares? Let's watch the trailer. So this is what it looks like all together. Way too loud. Finally having ourselves a real homecoming around here again. Is this our homecoming? A new beginning? Not trailer park, but it's a trailer. But you did all in Final Cut 10. And it was a serial killer. If there's a spill, I'll page you. Otherwise, stay out of sight. Scary movies in my place. Oh no, she's running. Oh, she's done. Stupid kid. Oh, now I'm sufficiently scared. Let me add some effects throughout the whole thing too, just on certain shots. So there you have it. We turned a bunch of clips into a half-decent trailer in about 20 minutes. And the producer is happy. We can send that off. And uh, good news, the film did get uh, distribution, and it's now on iTunes. So yeah, that is, uh, that's my demo. I'm Adam Bedford. You can find me at Adam the Editor on Twitter, or uh, follow our radio show, Going Postal, at Going Postal Show. Thanks very much.